Yesterday, I uh, I posted uh, some pictures of this new magnetic building board of mine, and I kind of wanted to expound on that just a little bit and and show you how I built uh, a wing on it just uh, in, in about a few hours. Um, I went to a local sheet metal shop here uh, and asked them to cut me a piece of, uh, first of all, I asked them if they had any scrap, and they didn't. So I had to actually pay a little bit more for it, but I asked them to cut me a piece of either 22 or 24 gauge uh, galvanized sheet metal or steel because <clears throat> I don't want it rusting. And they did, and I think this is 22 inch or 22 gauge, excuse me. Um, the reference lines that you see are not where ribs go or anything else. They're they're just that a reference line, so that when I line my ribs up <clears throat> on my bottom spar, I can eyeball them and see if they're cocked one way or the other. I want to keep them, you know, perpendicular to the spar. Um, what I have done here, and also I've drawn a center line down the center where the spar is laying right now. Uh, <clears throat> the the first thing you do um, when you get ready to build a wing with a magnetic building board like this, and by the way, this uh, there's a website called Airfield Models um, that the guy has been doing this for years, and he sells fixtures and magnets and everything. Uh, but you can buy this stuff yourself and save yourself some money. Um, anyway. Um, you lay this on a flat surface, and I put the reference signs on there with a magic marker. Uh, the first thing you do in building a wing is most ribs, as you know, have a, a slot for the top and bottom spar. This is a typical, I think this is for a dolphin, to tell you the truth, that I never built. It takes a quarter inch by quarter inch front uh, spar um, leading edge, uh, what I call a fish mouth or a shark's mouth type rib has a quarter inch slot top and bottom for your wing spars and then in the back it may or may not have a step down this one does not show it so you would probably uh, you know put a piece of trailing edge 1 16th on there and then put your center sheeting on or um, a cap strip or however whatever the design calls for but what I want to do today is just kind of show you how I built this banshee wing and then I'll show you the banshee wing in a minute this spar right here represents the bottom spar. It's not by any means as long. It's just 36 inches long. Most wings are longer than that. So I'm just using this. So just pretend this is your spar that you have spliced together for the total length of the wing. Um, I marked a little C on here. You probably can't see it just for my reference for that being the center. Um, and uh, like the Banshee, for example, it comes left or right or center about an inch or so to put your first ribs in. R1, you would call it. But here's how here's how you work this thing. You take your rib and you just set it right down on top. Now I'm going to put it on this line, but it necessarily the ribs don't necessarily fall on these lines. But I'm going to just drop it down on there and just set it there. Okay. Now I make sure that it's just touching there. And what you do is you take these magnets. Here are the ceramic magnets that you need to buy to go with this and you can buy them from the magnet source. Uh, I posted, uh, somebody asked me, I think it was Bill Morrell, asked me about these magnets and which ones I bought. Um, and they, uh, I bought I a bought hundred, and you'll need at least a hundred. No, I bought two hundred, excuse me. I bought two hundred, but you'll, leave, you know, you can start with a hundred, I guess. Um, when you build your fuselage on a built-up fuselage or profile fuselage, you're going to use fixtures that are attached to this board by these magnets. but. I'll get into that later on when I start on a few slides. Right now I want to concentrate on the wing. So what I do is I tear a couple of these magnets off and uh, you know make sure you, you know like all magnets they have opposing poles that's trying to push me apart this is pushing me together. Now these things are strong. I can't tell you uh, you know how much I mean you can put them right next to each other and, and they'll just grab a hold of each other and uh, it's amazing the force these things have. But what I will do in order to get my ribs straight up and down perpendicular, I will just take one of them and set it right there next to the rib, wherever the rib. I mark my spar too. That, I, I forgot to mention that. You take a magic marker or a pencil and you want to put your spar on the plan and mark the locations of your ribs. And that way you can drop this right down on your little line that you've, know, that you've marked on there where this rib, particular rib happens to go. 
And then what you want to do is stand these things up and get it, as, you know, wherever's comfortable for you or and that tried to push me apart. Okay, now I've got that rib sandwiched in between those two magnets and it's standing perfectly straight up and down. Take another two and what you'll do is you'll take these two and put it back towards the back of the rib. Somewhere in this area. Okay, now you've got a rib that ain't going to go anywhere, believe me, that's standing straight up and down. Now how do we keep know that the wing is true this way? Well, that's what this little piece of, uh, uh, of uh, half inch by half inch is going to show you. Actually, when I built the Banshee or any other wing, I'd have a piece that runs the whole length of the wing, or two pieces just underneath the ribs. What you want to do is take this and scoot it up underneath the rib until it touches, and that's about it. And you want it to just be right where it, where this piece of half inch meets the bottom of the rib. Put it right there. Take another two of these magnets, like so. And you're going to run them all the way up and down the length of this back piece here. I'm going to put one here and one there to hold it. And then we'll put one on this side too, or two on this side, just to show you what I'm talking about. Like so. Now, I just want to look, just kind of adjust this so it's just touching the bottom of that rib. And that it is right there. Now that thing is not going to go anywhere. That's your guide. That keeps the back of your ribs up at the same height. This will automatically align. You may have to take your, your rib and, and you know make sure that it's touched down here. And every rib that you put in this way is going to be the same. You just go right down the line and then you just add your magnets. Boy, these things are strong. I can't believe it. But you go down the line, you'll add your magnets to the front and also to the back, like so. You want to make sure that you get the rib pressed down again so it's the, the butt end of it is, is, is against this piece of just touching the uh, one half by one half. And these reference lines, you can look down at your rib and you can tell whether that's straight or not. Um, if you had a little bitty square, I guess you could put it in between there and make sure, but you know, the eye adjustment on that is, is good enough. So, you know, once you do that, you go all the way up and down, you've got your, your wing and your rib set in the proper place, drop your top spar in, just like the bottom spar. Wait a minute, I got ahead of myself. Once you get all the ribs in, you take just a, a dropper of, uh, let me show you, excuse me, I'll get off camera a minute. I use these and I actually buy them from uh, uh, Carolina uh, Biological Supply and uh, you know you can you can stick them in and, and I forgot exactly what you call these things there's a name for them and, and I'm getting old and I can't remember stuff but you drop it into your thin CA you get a little bit up in here and you know you want to go along where you put where the ribs meet the spar and just put a tiny drop just a tiny drop is all you need you don't want it running down and getting the spar um, glued to the metal. And you can scrape it off, but that's just a mess. You don't want to do it. And if you do it carefully enough, I'll tell you what, as you go along, you don't even have to use this. You can actually put Elmer's on there. Just a little dab of Elmer's and drop that down on there and let it dry It'd be just as good. It's just a little quicker, that's all, to use your thin CA or your hot stuff to do that with. And once you get those down and locked down, then you drop your top spar in and you got your top spar in, you got your bottom spar in, you got your ribs, and then you can lay your trailing edge across here. I usually put a weight, I've got some weights, I should have gotten all this on before I started making this video. Whatever the width, whatever the width of the um, trailing edge sheeting is supposed to be, you cut it to the appropriate width. This is about one inch. I think the Banshee is one inch. Um, I'm just going to break a little piece of it off. And uh, you would put your Elmer's here, or whatever type of glue you use, and then drop these on where they're supposed to go. 
And then you can just take a little weight of some sort and put it on there until it dries. And your, your uh, back of your ribs will line up as they should, straight. So will the front. You can take your piece of one quarter by one quarter and put it in there. Now, the logical progression for me is that the first thing I do is I, uh, I drop the ribs on, on the spar and I attach the uh, or glue the ribs to the spar and have them all on there. Um, I then come back here to the trailing edge and do one side of the trailing edge this way. And uh, that way I've got one spar in and then I've got one, I got the top half of the uh, of the uh, trailing and sheeting on. Then I'll go back and put the, the uh, top spar in. Flip the wing over and then all you've got to do is put on your other side of, of trailing edge and then you sheet the center and uh, the end bays are wherever it calls for sheeting. Um, the banshee did not call for leading edge sheeting so it's just center sheeting. So anyway, short tutorial on how to use your magnetic um, uh, building board and to build a wing. Uh, I'll do uh, one on the fuselage once I get some fixtures cut for that. Um, you need to order these. Uh, they're ceramic. And they're fragile. Ceramic magnets are fragile and you can break them. So be careful when you're throwing them around because uh, you know they're not indestructible but they are powerful. And these are actually used for cabinet latches. Is what the first reason you have a hole in it and then they also make a, a metal plate that goes on each side of it and that comes in handy when you're making your fixtures and I'll show you that later on. But again if you want to see this uh, personified just go to airfieldmodels.com and look up his magnetic building board system. Uh, I didn't invent this but I think it's a great way to build without pins. It's fast, it goes up fast and it just it's accurate. Okay. Um, any other questions, feel free to email me or drop me a personal note on, on Stunt Hanger or Stuka Stunt and I'll be glad to answer them. Thanks guys, hope that helped. But before I go, getting ahead of myself, let me show you the Banshee Wing. Here's the Banshee Wing that uh, I just built on this. It's the first wing I've ever built on this on the magnetic building system and it is true, it is straight, it was easy to build. I've just got to put the tips on it, put on my center sheeting, I'll put the bell crank in. I'll try to do a video when I put the bell crank in because it'll have a suspended bell crank. But uh, this is uh, this is how the Banshee wing looks without the tips and the other stuff that goes on it. But it was done on this board and uh, very easy, easy to do. Thanks guys. Talk to you later. Bye.